Hello, everybody. We're going to wait a couple minutes and let others join the webinar, but uh, this is the Panassas webinar here from the Earth to the Cloud, learn how to extend PanFS. Let's see. Give another minute here. Okay, this, uh, first of all, this uh, webinar is being recorded. It will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, but uh, again, welcome. <clears throat> I am Richie Waikawa. I'm a Senior Director of Strategic Marketing at Panassas. And once again, I'm joined by our uh, Senior Solutions Architect, Sean Dutton. Sean, welcome. Thank you. Look forward to it. Yeah, I feel like uh, we're really looking forward to this. Um, um, but uh, I will do my best to properly set this up into proper context. And so uh, for all those joining, yes, we will go into detail with Sean walking us through and how to actually extend PanFS to the cloud. But um, let me go through a little setup, if you will. So um, back to, back to the title, by the way. From if you didn't get the reference, it was uh, the Jewel Jewel Verne reference. And just as a little aside, 1865 is when he wrote that book. And if you think they just announced us going back up with Artemis II to, the, to go around the moon. So it's actually interesting how uh, uh, we're at an interesting point in our history. And as we are in HPC, so that kind of leads into this concept. Uh, I was actually in uh, Singapore talking with our solution architect out in the APAC region, Alex Johnson. And we were talking and he was like, this is, this is modern HPC, right? Today, things are different. And it really is. We were talking about this whole confluence of converging workloads. And if you look at this chart, you, you see that data volume is continued to grow. So that's it. that's a given. I think we all understand that. But if you look at the HPC landscape and you see what's been happening over the last eight years or so, you see this convergence happening. And it's leading to consolidation of systems as well as this convergence of not just mixed workloads, but of workloads that are changing the workflow. So back you know, I, I reference these, uh, I, I like these things. So Professor, you know, Messier and his HPC and big data back back then in these observations, you have all this data, you use big data to, to process and shrink the data, use HPC to extrapolate that data out, bring it back down and you have your results. So it's already changing the workflow if you see how HPC is being used. Similarly, if you look at uh, what uh, Simon Say and, you know, J Jeff Addy of uh, NVIDIA had this HPC with AI in the loop, I think we all are seeing this we have a lot of customers who are doing this type of work, especially in some of that imaging, seismic imaging and other image processing where you're doing all this pre-processing. You have man in a loop as well as simulation. You're doing extrapolation. You're able to now replace and do AI, uh, like deep learning to increase the you know the, the processing capabilities. So you're decreasing the whole time for you to be able to, to uh, to actually build images and all. So um, that's HPC and the loop. And then we're moving forward. I really like this, this model that Nicholas debated at uh, HP, this HPC and internet workflows, because this is where we are going, I truly believe. And this is what's what's great about the modern HPC, that it's this combination of traditional HPC with data analytics and ML and data coming in and where it's being processed in the cloud and the edge and on-prem is, is changing. It's not just from, again, this works this workload capability, but this hybrid workflow where things are being intermixed. And, and as, as many of you probably do recognize and are working probably on this ability to be able to bring together this sort of the C-based HPC world with the with like the Python-based AI world and be able to have tools and work uh, environments all being able to uh, develop these applications that combine these type of capabilities. Um, again, expanding to the edge and cloud, but what does that really mean? It's this need for visibility of what we have, being able to analyze, and this is a setup for you, Sean, about mobility, and mobility to the cloud is what we'll talk about today. Meanwhile, a little bit of little advertisement for Panassas. Uh, so we are 23 years old. This, I think we're coming up on our 24th birthday here at Panassas. 
um, we were this you know we've been a pioneer here in uh, NAS and parallel file systems. We were actually the industry's first commercially available parallel file system for Linux. Um, today, our primary products are we have this Panafis. It's really a parallel file system, like an operating system, operating environment developed with. Uh, we deliver that as a turnkey solution with our Active Store appliances. And as you can see, the things that we think drive differentiated value for us and all is this ability to have the simplicity, the reliability, and, and the lowest TCO. Um, our solution set today is made up of really our Panafis software suite. And as you look uh, this across the suite, the, a lot of management products and all uh, and some security additions uh, to our to our uh, POSIX compliant parallel file system. But we also have two products that we've been talking about here in the last few months. Um, one is called PanMove, another is PanView, one's for data movement protection, other is for this discovery analytics and visualization. And those two products primarily come from a collaboration with a tempo, which I thought was kind of neat because it goes back to our title, Fuel for Being French. And the tempo is a French company. So they've been around for three decades and they've been doing data management, data protection, and I'm really happy to work with them on the integration of PanFS with, uh, with the Tempo. Um, our products run on these turnkey appliances. We have uh, portfolio storage, what we call storage nodes, uh, all flash hybrid, and then massive capacity hard drive really based uh, solutions. And then we have our uh, active storage dir director and we have an IB router for connecting IB clusters with our Ethernet based storage systems. Um, to dig down into this uh, Panifest software suite, um, again, we're going to dig into this this last, uh, this second to last area about mobility. And Sean will talk about our products in that set. We have a, a PAMU Sync, which is really a, a parallel uh, RSync capable, you know, really feature rich parallel for RSync. Uh, but we also have PAMU Advanced. And then PAMU Backup and PAMU Archive, which are additions to our PAMU Advanced, which provides mobility and mobility to the cloud, S3 objects, and mobility amongst ourselves. Um, again, um, we did a webinar, Sean and I, back on January 31st. It's available on our website. It's called Data Analytics and Data Movement at Scale with PAMU and PAMU. And um, with that, I will turn this over to Sean to be able to go through how to extend Panifest to the cloud. Thanks, Riccio. All right. All right. Perfect. Now I should have control. There we go. Excellent. So looking at PanMove and the architecture around what we're going to be doing with our demo today, you can see from the left side, you have our Active Store Ultra series, right? It could be the Ultra, it could be actually our classic, which is um, our AS 12, 16. And then in the center, we have our PanMove Advanced Server. This is a, for the demo, we have just the server itself, but to be able to scale and get more throughput, you can actually add data, data movers, which we consider agents within the software. And the data can go to targets such as Active Store uh, appliances. So you can go from an Ultra to a Ultra XL. Uh, a lot of customers have need for going from flash to long-term uh, warm archive with our Excel series. Then with the demo, we'll be going to actually AWS. And so you can go to the cloud, Azure, Google, or if you have on-prem uh, S3 objects, we can also go there. So looking at the architecture for the demo itself, we have what we call our ultra series. And I have a volume on there, PanMove Cloud, which I'll be using PanMove Advance to move to AWS. So let's get into the demo. It's a pre-recorded demo, so I'll be uh, playing it and stopping and as needed. So the first part of the demo is actually looking at the volume within the pan Panastas uh, GUI. So if we come down to storage, you can see here's our volume, pan move cloud. It's a RAID 5 and um, capacity is around 60 gigs. So that's our source that we'll be using to move to the cloud. 
Next, what we want to do is actually create a bucket named PanMove Cloud in AWS. So we go to AWS and name our bucket PanMove Cloud. I selected the, the region of Ohio because it's the closest to our, our lab. You can, uh, if you need to go across, you know, the, the country to have protection, you can set up different regions. The object ownership and um, public, public access, I left all as default. Then you have the, if you have the need to do versioning, we can do bucket versioning. Um, so if you're putting up a lot of data and you need to keep versions, we have that. And then also the default encryption is the Amazon, AWS. So as you can see, here's our bucket, it's been created. The next thing we got to do is actually create an access point, how we're going to get to that bucket we just created. So we'll create an access point. The access point is pan move demo. We can specify the, the bucket. So we'll go and do a browse on my S3 and pick the bucket I created in the last step. As you can see, my region is Ohio. Since I don't have the VPC created in our environment, I'm actually using the internet for a connectivity. Um, so if you have AWS and you have VPC, you can, and you have that um, tunnel going from your data center into AWS, you'll be able to use that also. And so now we'll just create this. So now we have the access point created. So now what we want to do is actually go into our pan move advanced GUI and create an agent. So as I mentioned before, we're going to be using our server as our data mover. Since this is a, a small environment, there's not a lot of data, it's okay. But in larger environments where you want more data and um, larger throughput, you would come in you would create a new agent and you would actually create uh, a new pool of agents to be able to scale out. So now we want to set up the storage manner and the container. This is actually setting up our target. So we go in new storage manager. And as you can see, there's many different options within storage manager that we can use. These are all, um, it could be tape, it could be S3 connectivity or disk. So for us, the storage manager is S3. The configuration, I use uh, the, so I'm naming the storage manager AWS pan move. The network address, we will use the um, east to Amazon AWS.com uh, URL. And then you can actually, if you have some proxies, or anything transfer accelerators, you can configure those. Or if you need to do some volume management, and volume management is triggers on retention jobs, right? So the, the amount of data, the, the age of data, you can set up different volume management to actually automatically start moving data uh, to this container or the storage manager. So now we want to create this. So after you create your storage manager, letting PanMove Advanced know what kind of storage you're going to be using, the next thing we want to do is actually create a container. And the container itself is the actual space that we'll be using. So you'll notice I, I named it PanMove Container. And then we'll go down to the configuration. We need to put the access key and the secret access key into the configuration. So this is how we generate that. You have to go back into AWS and click on access key, create your access key. And for security purposes, you'll see I skipped the, the copy and it's already pasted in there. 
And so then you put in the bucket you created in AWS. So this is the actual storage that we're going to be using for our, um, our demo today. As you can see up here, we can use Glacier, Deep Archive. So when we get to the next few steps, I'll talk a little bit more about that, of why we would want to use those. So now we have within Pan, um, Pan Move Advanced, we now have the storage that we're going to go for target uh, created. So one of the things that we do to help with throughput is we change the number of copy threads. So copy threads are based on the number of cores. And this is something that we can talk to you about best practices. So I set this to four because it's a small server and we don't want to overrun it. So here, what I was mentioning before about you know, Deep Archive and Glacier. So we're now going to set up our move capability within Pan Move Advance. We're going to use option one, which is this, the easy move. It's a quick way to get something from point A to point B. But we also have three other options. You can do data migration, you can do backup, you can do archive. These are all schedule based. So you can create schedules around, you know, when and what you want to be moved to the cloud. So if you want to do, you know, based on, um, you know, percentage of use, we can do some migration uh, scheduling. If you want to back up your data, you know, backup is a baseline with incrementals after, or archive, which is full backups each time the schedule runs. So things to keep in mind is the amount of data that you'll be backing up into the cloud just so you don't overrun your uh, subscription. So now we're going to do the easy move. So we click on easy move. We click, click on the source. We drill down to it. You can see it's pan move cloud on the, the left side. And then on the right side, we got actually click on uh, pan move cloud, the AWS. We add it and then we validate the basket. And what validate the basket is, is the actual running of the task. So now that it's ran, you can come over to activity. You can see jobs. And job 13 is the actual task that's running. And job 14 is the actual copy. So if we're looking at, oh, let me go back just a second. There we go. So if we're looking at the copy jobs, if we have multiple data movers, you'll have multiple copy jobs here. Since I only have one data mover, you will only see the one copy job. And you can see the rate of data. So 11 megabits per second going through our internet connection. And the job started at 719. So with the great thing about video editing, we can kind of fast forward. Oops, let me get back to that. We can actually fast forward to the finish of the job, which finished at 8.33 p.m. So it took basically about an hour and 15 minutes to run this job. You can go into details if you want through the logs and, and see actually what happens. So now that the job is done, we really want to see and validate that we move data into our new container in the S3 bucket on AWS. So first, we can actually go into the container and look at our data that resides on AWS. So we're actually looking at AWS when we're doing this. So you go to the container and click open. So any modifications you make from the pan move advanced GUI will make that on your AWS. So if you delete the data from there, it will be deleted on the cloud itself. And then you can see we have data, we have objects that were moved. And then we can go into matrix and we can see that we had some data. We have close to 50, about 50 uh, gigabytes of data moved uh, through that demo. So that's the end of the demo. It's a, a short, um, a quick, oops. It won't. There we go. 
So that's a short, quick demo of how to move something from on-prem to the cloud. It's simple. We can help you uh, do, you know, set this up. If you're looking at using it as a backup or archive uh, utility, you know, we'll be happy to, to work with you on that. And so the summary of it is going from Earth, as Richo mentioned, the cloud, right? So that's that's the summary. Thanks, Sean. Um, I think uh, I, think I kind of jumped the gun at the beginning, and uh, but that's fine. I do see people are used to these things and asking questions and answers. Just to uh, let you know that uh, this is the time that we will be going through questions and answers. So please continue to add ask questions if you have any. Um, and I was uh, uh, should have uh, thanked uh, Ila Aurora, who is our uh, set this up. I guess she's our program manager for all this and has um, worked with us to get this all created. And again, thank you, Sean, for going through the effort of creating another demo. I know it's uh, working with live demos, actually uh, setting that up is not the easiest thing in the world. So with that, please continue to add questions. And let's see if we can. Um... OK, uh, Sean, on the q and I'll tee you up, yeah. I think, is probably the way. Uh, we were talking a little bit about encryption. I think there's a question about elaborating on that, uh, if you could do that. Yeah, so I, I saw you talked about encryption. Can you elaborate on encryption to and from the cloud? Yeah, so in the demo, you can see we used Amazon's default um, encryption. But if you have to have additional encryption um, going across from one site to another, or we can actually run a, uh, a, pan, a data mover in the cloud to give you that additional going from one data mover to another, you can get that additional deep uh, encryption that may be needed. So we have multiple ways of doing encryption um, on-prem and from on-prem to the cloud. Thanks, Sean. I think, um, I think you covered this one. Somebody probably missed it about uh, which cloud and maybe what kind of object storage that we support. I think, uh, we did this on AWS, and I think we mentioned Azure and Google Cloud. I think the, the main thing is PanMove Advanced. We support those three cloud platforms as well as anything that's S3 object store. You mentioned about being on-prem, but also with PanMove Backup or PanMove Archived additions to PanMove Advance, it's primarily anything that has an S3 or a Swift interface on it from a cloud perspective. And again, all the S3 objects. And we also so, support tape. So if you have a need to do backup and archive the tape, we can also support that. And let's see, it's a, another question, and it's maybe, it's about the transfer rate. I think you showed yep. the transfer rate, but I think you also set up the whole thing about connecting with the internet and having yep. many data movers and all that. So if you can help with that. Um, yeah, so if you, if you need to see your transfer rate, you can go into your jobs and the jobs will show you the transfer rate of the given um, running task. But if you need to get more detailed, you can go actually into those jobs uh, within the logs and see additional information. Okay, and I think I've been talking about these various versions. Um, so where can you actually get that on-demand video. So on in our Panassas website under resources and webinars, you can see our on-demand webinars of which you'll find scrolling to the beginning of the year are the webinar about PanMove and PanView. And it'll go into details about the differences between the versions of PanMove and, and PanView and what you can get from the analytics side. Today, we didn't cover anything on the analytics side, but certainly you'll, you'll be wanting to run your analytics, your PanView, and see what uh, what's uh, what files and directories and users and all that that's available for you to be able to help you with your data movement planning. Um, okay, and I think that is it. That's actually a good one. I think uh, hopefully this was very uh, helpful in terms of uh, you know I started off talking about HPC. 
the modern HPC and certainly the cloud and the edge are uh, an element of that. And the workloads and the workloads are changing. But how do you get things to the cloud for, for storage or for processing in the cloud? And I think uh, you've done a great job of walking us through, Sean. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and I Glad to help. Yeah, and thank you again, Ela, for all your help. And with that, we look forward to seeing you back uh, for uh, another webinar. I think we've got one coming up in a month's time. So thank you very much, for everybody, for attending today.